Hello everyone and welcome to an incredible game from round 9 of this year's FIDE Grand Swiss. It is Vincent Keimer versus Nihal Sarin and uh, uh, both of them are having a great tournament but not the absolute best tournament as the point of this tournament is to win one of the two spots in the next FIDE candidates tournament and Vincent um, uh, comes from a tough loss to Yesipenko in the last round and this game is, uh, well, weird to say the least. It's uh, similar to what we've seen in the Jeffrey Shong game uh, but it's not like... Uh, yeah, there was a completely new game and then we go into blunder territory here the completely new game happens on move 14 and the blunder happens on move 18 but without analyzing the game very deeply we will we would have missed the blunder and we would think it's just a casual blunder but it's actually a very deep blunder so that being said, uh, let's check it out. Um, uh, on, to on top boards, uh, the leaders, Fabiano Caruana, was fighting uh, Bogdan Daniel Dag. Their game ended in a draw. And the other pair that was also leading the tournament, Vidit Gujarati, uh, was playing against Andrei Sipenko. Their game also ended in a draw. So let's check out what happened here. Vincent with the white pieces opens with pawn to d4. We have pawn to d5, knight f3, knight to f6, and now pawn to c4, offering to go uh, into um, the, the, the famous gambit territory and D captures on C4. We have the Queen's Gambit accepted on the board. E3, we have pawn to E6 and now Bishop captures on C4. We have pawn to C5 uh, and castles. And now we have pawn to A6. Now, uh, this is a pretty standard position and uh, it, it's the, the main line of the Queen's Gambit accepted where White has some very nice choices like D captures on C5. This is White's top choice, then A4, White's second uh, top choice, then uh, Bishop to B3, the third choice, Queen to E2, the the fourth choice and so on and so on uh, Vincent however plays White's uh, 12th choice uh, currently in the database and that is Rook to E1 it's a very very rare move and it has been played a couple of times Nurgil Salimova played it against Anna Muzichuk uh, she was able to win this game, for example, uh, Gukesh played it against Aronyan, he lost that game, and also there are some draws, uh, for example, Ali Reza played it against MVL, Grishu played it against Nakamura, uh, also resulting in a draw. So, okay, Rook to E1, what do you play? Knight to C6, putting pressure on white center, uh, Knight to C3, and now Pawn to B5, so fairly standard Queen's Gambit moves, uh, uh, attacking the Bishop, Bishop to D3, and now pawn, Bishop to uh, B7. Uh, but as the Knight is already developed on c6 you can now go for this a4 breakthrough as the bishop is for the moment not controlling the e4 square and that is exactly what vincent does pawn to a4 b4 and now knight to e4 we have knight to a5 putting pressure on the knight here and knight captures on f6 so basically everything the same uh, like in the game gukesh versus levon aronyan that we mentioned only in that game g captures on f6 was played um, uh, where, where aronyan defeated gukesh but here we have a uh, queen captures on f6 uh, pawn to e4 and now pawn to h6 and there is one more game in the database where d5 was played immediately Maxim Matlakov played it against Alexander Rachmanov last year in the Russian championship uh, and th that game ended in a draw but here we have bishop to d2 by Vincent and it is now as of move 14 that we have a completely new game so uh, of course now if uh, black at some point captures on d4 you will have uh, you will have weakened the b4 pawn and that's exactly what happened c captures captures on d4 and now pawn to e5 you cannot recapture the queen is defending the pawn so e5 and Nihal says all right I will just go back with the queen and defend my pawn from d8 Vincent says all right you are up a pawn for the moment but your king is still in the center of the board uh, rook to c1 and the bishop to e7 now getting ready to castle and Vincent launches pawn to h4 now saying that he has a very uh, nice attacking formation and that Nihal should be very careful if he decides to actually castle kingside for example if castles kingside Vincent could go for something like bishop to b1 then he could put the queen on c2 threaten sub checkmating ideas and it's not very easy for black to play this uh, for example you cannot capture an h4 as the b4 pawn has been weakened so it's hanging and although although it can be played you can play something like d3 the game continues you allow white to go for a rook lift with rook e3 maybe then the knight can move maybe you can shift the rook into the attack so this would be a very very aggressive game but instead after h4 Nihal goes queen to b6 first adds another defender to the b4 pawn uh, and now Vincent plays uh, bishop to f4 now if bishop to b1 one, the queen can even come to d3 which is much better than c2 and c2 the queen can be contested for example with rook to c8 uh, and here 
uh, it's in, an incredibly uh, poisonous territory. Uh, there, there's only one good move that you can play. To give you an example, if you castle now, if you castle now, bishop to b1 just wins the game on the spot. That's how good this position is for white. To give you an example, let's say you play pawn to h5 because you know that white will simply play queen d3, threaten checkmate, you will play g6, and now you might think, okay, it's perfectly fine. No, it's not. Knight to g5. And this is a, a fairly famous standard attacking formation for white in, in similar setups where you are threatening all sorts of nasty ideas like knight captures on f7, then queen captures on g6. Uh, but to give you an example, if black plays a move as there really aren't any useful moves, just g4 also wins the game. Uh, if you capture, then h5 is coming. This is how you break through. If you don't capture, then g captures. Sorry, then g captures on h5, and this is how you break through. And uh, white always wins this. So the only way to actually play this after bishop to f4, uh, and um, it, it's really important. Uh, to show you why, I'm not going to tell you how, how to play against this, I'm first going to show you what was played. Bishop to d5 was played, and now Vincent uh, is completely winning here, but you have to figure out how. Feel free to pause the video and try to find the winning idea here while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, uh, congratulations on spotting knight captures on d4. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, that's exactly what Vincent played. But now uh, I will just show you why uh, rook 8 to d8 was better first. It, it's almost like Nihal overlooked this move. He played the exact same line that has to be played, only he should have started with rook 8 to d8. Point is that if you first play rook 8 to d8 and now white plays something, let's say pawn to h5 as you really want to play this move, uh, and now now bishop to d5, the move that Nihal played. Now knight captures on d4 is not nearly as potent because here you can play bishop to c5 and after bishop to e3, let's say captures, captures, uh, queen captures on d4, now bishop to b5 check does not win the black queen because you can play bishop to c6 and now you don't care because uh, the, the black queen is also defended by the rook on d8. So that's why rook a to d8 is such a potent move and here you'd have nothing better than to trade captures, captures, you're going to capture here with check, king e7, and okay, the game continues, nothing spectacular, but in the game after bishop to d5, uh, now knight captures on d4 uh, is actually, well, just uh, very, very strong, and while you could continue playing this without capturing the knight, uh, it's very hard to actually find a useful move, uh, it, whatever you play, you play something like h5, you want to prepare g6, then comes bishop to e3, and Vincent will always have this advantage, uh, uh, of of uh, uh, sort of Nihal just blundering the d4 pawn. So it's something uh, that we always mention uh, that a grandmaster will never never do. They will never admit a mistake. So here it would seem Nihal commits to his mistake and he plays queen captures on d4. And he will get quite a lot of counterplay for his sacrificed queen. Uh, however, qu a bishop to b5 with check. Okay, he, uh, he does win the queen. A captures on b5, queen captures, and now b captures on a4. And now look at this. If a3 is played, you have the bishop here, you have the rook on the a file preparing uh, to push the pawn. If uh, black is allowed to do this, then uh, Vincent could be in a lot of trouble. So here, there is only one way to actually force uh, a win here, uh, which I'm sure some of you saw even in the previous pause the video moment. But just in case some of you haven't, feel free to pause the video again and try to find this continuation of this variation while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on continuing uh, this brilliancy. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is rook to c7. That's the only move that stops pawn to a3. And you're probably wondering, how does this stop pawn to a3? Well, if pawn to a3, rook captures on e7. That's how you stop it. And if king captures, now queen captures on b4 comes with check. And once the king moves, you can give a check or you don't have to. And then you capture on a3 and you eliminate uh, any and all counterplay black might have had for that sacrifice queen. However, after rook to c7, uh, bishop to d8 was played, attacking the rook, but now just rook to a7. And once this rook gets straight
trade it off, you will not have the, uh, the much needed support to advance that past a pawn down the board or soon to be past a pawn. You still have to move the king or castle the king and bring the other rook into the game, but that's that's just a lot of moves. Rook captures on a7, queen captures and now castles. a3, you, you, you have nothing to support the pawn with, so you have to bring the rook into the game. But now bishop to d2 and now, uh, well, pawns will start falling. Knight to c6 was played attacking the queen, but now the a4 pawn falls. Bishop to e7 defending uh, on b4, now pawn to h5. We have rook to d8 uh, and now rook to c1, just uh, putting pressure on that knight here. So you still cannot capture it because the bishop on d2 would still be hanging. So queen to a6, we have pawn to b3, now the pawn is nicely defended, but just queen to b6. And he was in this position on move 30 uh, that Nikhal Sarin resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, for those of you who like it uh, when I finish the games, uh, how the game might continue is well you have to uh, create some sort of a, 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 an advantage that will enable you to win now you uh, definitely will be threatening rook captures here and then uh, queen captures on d8 as you will remove the defender of the rook so let's say rook to d7 is played now you will move the bishop again now you're threatening rook captures here to just pick up two pieces for the rook and once the knight moves now you play bishop to e3 uh, and now you are well basically you want to get your rook and queen to the back rank but the knight is preventing you from doing that the knight is guarding the c8 square so you might play bishop to c5 eliminate the knight and then put the rook on c8 put the queen on b8 and win the game so there's very little black can do about this if let's say rook to b7 you will play queen to d8 and now okay bishop to c6 stops the rook but now comes bishop to c5 now you are ready to, to start capturing here and if rook to d7 attacking the queen queen will just go back to b6 again now you're threatening to capture the knight and then pick up the bishop and once the bishop moves now you've accomplished all you need queen to b8 and now there's there's no stopping bishop captures on e7 followed by rook to c8 and then it's just game over so there's only one way to do it you can do it many other ways uh, but yeah of course uh, Nihal knows this and he knows that there's no point in continuing this after queen to b6 uh, so yeah, uh, tough break for Vincent yesterday, losing that game to hard game to Espenko, but he bounces back now to get this game against uh, Nihal Sarin. And like I said, it was a very, very close uh, to Nihal actually holding this, whether, it was, uh, whether he mixed up lines, uh, because I really doubt it uh, with, um, uh, with Vincent playing like the, the uh, 12th most popular continuation here with Rook to E1. I mean, you might have the, the top four, maybe even the top six ready from the top of your head, you know, know everything by heart. But I... Uh, I refuse to believe that, you know, the, the 12th most popular continuation, you know, the, the, the a couple of top engine lines. So, yeah, very nicely played by, by Vincent. He definitely outplayed him. And, uh, you know, a nice victory, 30 moves uh, against a strong player like Nihal. Uh, uh, great stuff. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I will check at least one more game from this round as it's also very important for the final standings and uh, with the final standings will decide the, the two candidates for the FIDE candidates tournament. Uh, I would like to uh, thank Chess Beats League, Romain Manini, Sam's Giant Tortoise Farm, Mar Marvin Sparrow and Gerhard Henkelmann for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions, but also just uh, uh, covering this tournament until it finishes. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day. And once again, big congratulations to those of you who found both pause the video moments, but also who solved the second pause the video moment during the first pause the video moment. See you soon.